Hey T Heads, this is Don from Rayleaf. You know I absolutely adore Dan Song Oolongs. It's one of my favorite tea types. I just love it so, so much. And I drink it all the time, either with friends or in solo sessions. And yet, I don't recall making many videos in recent years about Dan Song tea. Yes, I did a video where we visited Guangdong province where Dan Song is made and showing you all of the processing and the picking and the beautiful landscape. So if you'd like to take a trip to China with us, then go check out the video. I'll put a link in the description below. And yes, I've done some videos over the years, but recently I haven't made any because of the fact that our range has been pretty stable. We've got Royal Peach Orchid, classic. We've got Duck Shit Oolong, amazing. Black Fruit Punch, Eight Immortals, Almond Blossom, all great, great uh, Dan Song Oolongs that we love and enjoy. And every year the batch is different, sure, but we're not gonna reserve our video slots for just sort of talking about a new batch of tea. And because we haven't released any new Dan Song uh, teas, there hasn't been the opportunity to make a video. Well, that changes today because we have a new Dan Song tea. I'm very excited to introduce you to Pomelo Flower Oolong. So Pomelo Flower Oolong, we'll quickly scope this tea season. This is from the 24th of April, 2023 cultivar. This is from the Yolzer cultivar, or you could also call it Yohua cultivar, which basically means uh, pomelo flower. And so the quick catch up for those of you who don't know, Dansong teas are unique in that the cultivars are named after the fragrance or the taste that the tea has. Um, and also it's, um, very much related to the lineage from a mother tree. So they'll find a mother tree and the trees uh, for Dansong are trees. They're single uh, trunk trees rather than hedgerows or bushes. That's why Dansong means single uh, bush. So you've got this single tree that was growing and uh, they all had their own genetics because they've grown wild from seeds. And then when the producer or a farmer processes the tea from uh, those bushes, they ascribe a particular flavor or taste. And then if they really love that flavor or taste, then they'll start to take cuttings from that mother tree to make the lineage of that particular cultivar. And then they'll just keep the name running through. So Milan is one of the famous ones. That means honey orchid. And so it's a taste of honey orchid. We call it raw peach orchid um, for those of you um, who know our catalog. But basically you take this mother tree, then you start to take cuttings. So you're trying to keep some genetic stability or it's never going to be identical because there's always going to be mutations but you try to keep some level of genetic stability going through this cultivar the further away you are from the mother tree the more variation there's going to be in the genetics compared to the mother tree but generally you're keeping um, similar genetics and therefore you can call it the same cultivar so this is the yodza or yohua which basically means pomelo flower aroma and we love it so much and it has such a pomelo uh, uh, taste that we've called it pomelo flower but we also think it has a lot of honey notes so we call it pomelo flower honey the origin this is from daan village in guangdong in china the uh, picking and processing well go check out that video for the full picking and processing uh, description but essentially it's going to be up to the third or fourth leaf noticeably smaller this uh, picking so I'm not sure if it's the genetics of the cultivar and or the picking probably a combination of the two so noticeably smaller pickings than a lot of Dansong teas that you may see out there elevation around 900 meters from my recollection right I am brewing in this beauty here this is our latest exclusive collaboration with Master Wu Studios. We're calling this the flat top junda because it's taking the classic shape of a junda, but the junda normally has a rising sort of um, domed top and we've <coughs> given it a very unique silhouette, cut it, given it a flat top and uh, well, I love it. Otherwise I wouldn't have come up with this design with Master Wu. I think it's a really interesting sort of sleek way of modernizing the Junda silhouette. So this is what we call the flat top Junda. Uh, let's see what our temperature is of our water. 
it is cold. <laughs> 52. Anyway, so we'll wait for that to heat up. So um, for those of you who don't know Dan Song Teas, Dan Song Teas are revered amongst all tea lovers as being incredibly fragrant, incredibly just, you know, you talk about the fragrance level of teas um, and you can always say that oolong teas have a little bit more fragrance than, well, or a lot more fragrance than all the other types of tea because of the way that it's processed. Um, but Dan Song, I would say, is the most fragrant. It's the one that will give you the biggest wow factor on your nose. It's one of the ones that I always pull out for newbies who are like trying to go, well, I know what tea smells like or tastes like. It's like, okay, try Dan Song and then tell me the same thing. And if you tell me the same thing, then leave immediately because clearly you have no uh, uh, aroma uh, capabilities at all um, because it is so extreme. It's so extreme. Um, and so Dansong Oolongs are very, very aromatic. And as I said, these Dansong Oolongs are always named after the cultivar and the cultivar is always named after the initial uh, description of the flavor or smell of the uh, tea mother bush. An exception to that rule, well, there are a couple of exceptions to that rule. Dawuye's black leaf, big black leaf, so that describes the look. Uh, Yasha is duck shit. Uh, duck shit oolong, which um, the story around duck shit is, is a long one, but essentially, you know, a, supposedly a farmer that didn't want people to pick from that, that particular grove of bushes just said, oh, don't go over there. There's lots of duck shit around there. It's polluted the soil. There's no duck shit around there. It was a way to try to protect, you know, some valued uh, bushes. Um, so there are exceptions, but a lot of the Dansong uh, cultivars are named after the aromatic profile. An aromatic profile is key, but of course, what we want is the full package. And so a lot of times you will find a Dansong Oolong, which um, smells great. In fact, it's extremely rare that you don't find that a Dansong Oolong doesn't smell great, but you want it to translate into the mouth so that it has an incredible taste and texture and aftertaste, mouthfeel, all of those quality markers that are often not talked about enough. Okay, here we go. Pomelo flower honey, and I will tell you that I have tasted this tea multiple times. It has become an absolute household favorite. I have gone through more of this tea than any other tea I can remember in recent history. Uh, it is just a tea that you just want to keep going back to because it smells divine. And it smells very unique. Um, so let's just say it from the beginning, pomelo, 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 pomelo. Uh, not grapefruit, pomelo. It has a different uh, aromatic profile. Um, I would say uh, it's got a lot of honey, obviously. So pomelo and honey, let's just get those out of the way. Loads and loads of flowers. The instant uh, um, recollection that comes when I smell this is lime flowers. If you've never had lime flowers, then you need to go and try some. They are gorgeous. I think that they're also called linden flowers. I think, I hope that they're not two different things, but at least they're closely related. So pomelo, honey, Lime flowers. There are other flowers in here, but we'll get onto that when we smell the wet leaf. Turn this kettle off so it doesn't keep rumbling. Okay, smell of the wet leaf. Ah, oh, like, and um, just, somebody's taken a bouquet of fruits, flowers, and honey and just shoved it up my nose. It is so <laughs> over the top. It's almost too much, almost. Um, so let's have a smell. Jasmine, magnolia, orchid, floral, floral, floral. The honey is like a thyme honey. So it has that Mediterranean, herbal, slightly medicinal, 
uh, smell. Thyme, thyme honey for sure. Um, and again, loads and loads of those pomelos and loads and loads of lime flowers. And a slight, a slight mochi-like starchy creaminess as well. So mochi stuffed with like pomelo, pomelo thyme infused honey and, you know, I don't know, somehow fragranced with um, lime flowers, covered in a lime flower syrup. There you go. There's my culinary imagination for this tea. Obviously these pots, the Chaojo pots are perfect, perfect, perfect for this tea. The clay comes from the same area. Let's give Froggy a nice glug. There you go, Frog. Drink up. You must be thirsty. Been a while since I pulled out the Frog. Look at that, Master Wu Pour. Check out that, boom. You don't get better than a Master Wu Pot in terms of that kind of finesse, fully handmade, just top of the line, full spec pot, this one. Just everything about the Master Wu Studios from, I love those little tips. Look at that, just that little point. So round hole, little point, okay, can't focus. Cameras can't focus on such finesse. Oh, and I don't think you're gonna see lots of pictures surrounding me today because it's very, very focused, the, the smell of this. Pomelo, jasmine, pomelo fruit, lots of uh, herbal honeys, lots of flowers, you know. So um, it is, it's very, very focused and I love that. Are you gonna be able to focus on liquid? Lovely gold, let's just call it straight up gold liquor. All right, cheers everybody. Texture of Dan Songs is always gonna be in the medium range. They tend not to be very thick, they tend to be more of a refreshing uh, mouthfeel. Oh, the taste is remarkable. So I'm not getting a lot of those Mediterranean herbs, so not just thyme, but also oregano, fresh oregano. Um, the sweetness of honey, the sweetness of strawberry jam, which then leads into the sweetness of jasmine. Jasmine and strawberry are like so linked to me. I know that they seem very different, but if you think of the, imagine, just imagine the smell of a very sweet jasmine flower and then the smell of strawberry jam, there's an incredible link. And if you want to do a recipe with strawberries and jasmine, I believe that's what I did. I'll put a link in the description below for a smoked straw, smoked jasmine rice pudding with strawberry jam, I think. It's been a long time, but check it out. There's a video somewhere. Lime flowers, that, that linden flower taste, which is different. It's just got like a clean, uh, again, slightly in the, um, medicinal is too strong a word, but in the herbaceous note. It's not just floral, it's very herbaceous as well. I broke this tea out at a tea after dark, one of our private uh, lock-ins where it was a winner. You know, everybody was like, when's this coming out? I was like, it's gonna come out in a, in a month or so. Um, and I've held it back because of other releases that we've had to do and other videos that we've had to put out. Um, a tiny bit of that mochi has turned a little bit into a slightly buttery pastry note, but it is like a gentle finish to the main event, which is pomelo fruits, pomelo zests and flowers and honey. The astringency on this is light compared with 
a lot of Dan Song teas, which tend to have some of the biggest bites in the tea world is Dan Song, and you've got to be careful how you brew them. This one is, I'd say, relatively forgiving. Um, I'm brewing at 95, that's what I recommend, but you could brew at boiling point, but just, you, you just need to watch out on your steep times, but it is, it's a very light, refreshing feel in the mouth, um, and it has a quench, but it's not astringent, overly astringent at all. Right, second infusion. And I can tell you from experience that the um, longevity of this tea is good and the flavor remains pretty stable, so it doesn't change. So again, a very, very focused, stable taste of gorgeousness and different, so different from Royal Peach Orchid, from Duck Shit, from all of our other Dan songs, so remarkably different. I remember when I tasted this um, Yo, Yo Hua or Yo Tzu uh, Dan song, and I've tasted them before, right? From other suppliers, I've tasted them and I've never purchased them. Um, and there's plenty of different cultivars that we taste every single year, you know, your ginger flowers and your magnolias and all of these. Oh, I forgot Tea of the Tiger, that was another one that we, we released recently. But yeah, I mean, we taste a lot of different cultivars. And I've tasted this one on many occasions from the same village, actually. But this one just, just was remarkable. You know, it just had a remarkable taste and a remarkable aroma that was so true to what I would imagine like the mother tree would be like. To call this pomelo flower and to taste that, I was like, whoa. I've never smelt a pomelo flower, but I can imagine that it smells like pomelo zest and lime flowers combined, which is exactly what this is. Yeah, so the finish is light, slightly dry, but supple and soft, and it goes to a, um, is it Sprite or 7-Up? I can't remember. I think Sprite. That has lime in it, right? It's one of the other. It's been a while since I drank a soda. But it has that limey taste, like you've eaten one of those um, lime gummies, lime, lime gummy bears, or, you know, those lime sweets or lime sodas. Just a lovely, lovely taste in the mouth. Mm. Okay, let's have a sniff of this empty Gong Dao Bay. Always the Gong Dao Bay, empty Gong Dao Bay or empty cup is gonna be warmer in profile. I'm getting some of that salted butter pastry, but more just like straight up salted butter and lime flowers and honey. But it's more buttery and it's more honeyed in the nose on the empty Gong Dao Bay. Final sip from me. I'm so happy that I'm finally releasing this tea. I think it's gonna cause a lot of people to go into absolute tea rapture when you taste this, especially if you love your fragrant, flowery, but not scented oolong teas. It's an absolute must. Um, nothing else to say. A favorite at our house and no doubt it will be a favorite at many tea head sessions in the coming months. That's it, tea heads. Check out other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.